Father God, we entreat you. We entreat you. We Lord. invite you to seek on the throne of our hearts today, yes, oh God. God. We yes, remove God. anything that is not like you, yes, oh God. Lord. Yes, Lord. We remove any idols, Father God, that yes, we have exalted yes, above you, Father God. Yes, whether it be social media, yes, whether it be a Lord. want or a desire, yes, Father God, Lord. Yes, we just Lord. remove every we seat, remove every altar. Every Lord God, that is exalted above you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you will continue to put us in the pasture of prayer in this house, oh God. As you've declared that this house will be a house of prayer, oh God. This house will be a house of praise, oh God. Lord God, and we just thank you for our worship in our lifestyles, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we will walk into places, Father God, whether it be on our job, whether we visit another ministry, and they will know that the glory of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit resides within us, oh God. Because we are doing your will, Father God. Our lifestyles will depict the life of worship, oh God. So we just submit and we lay aside every sin and every weight, Father God, that so easily besets us, oh God. So we just, God, we just thank you. We just thank you for our right minds today, oh God. We thank you for clothing us in our right minds today, oh God. We thank you for the activity of our limbs, oh God, that we're even able to get up and come into a house of worship, oh God. There are some that are watching who wish that they can be in the house of God. And how dare us come into this house and not stand to our feet and give you worship and give you the glory that you deserve. How dare us come into this place, oh God, and act like you owe us something, oh God. So we just say thank you today for giving us the activity of our limbs, oh God. We say thank you, Father God, that we're able to walk we're able to clap our hands. We're able to open our mouths and give you the glory that is due your name, oh God. So we dare not come in here, Father God, and act like you owe us something, Father God, because we owe you everything, oh God. So we just say thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We ask, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus that you will send your arrows of deliverance to this house, oh God. That there will be a word today in this house, Father yes, God, that will activate miracle signs and wonders, yes, Father God. Lord, yes, Lord God, and that you will break every chain, release every shackle yes, that is Lord. meant, Lord God, that is meant for our bad, Father yes, God. That you will turn it around and make it for our good, oh God. Yes, Lord, Father God, release every band of wickedness in this place, Father God, in our minds, Father God. Every band of wickedness in our hearts, oh God. Cleanse us and hiss up, oh God. Cleanse us, oh God. Make us whole, Father God, and make us new on this day, Father God. We celebrate you, oh God. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. We celebrate you today, oh God. And not just today, Father God, but Monday through Sunday, Father God. Where we posture ourselves, Father God, for prayer. Father God, where we posture ourselves, Father God, to be corrected, Father God. When we correct for you chastise us, God, because you love us, oh God. So we thank you that we receive your chastisement Monday through Sunday, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, how dare us come in here with high minds, thinking that we don't deserve your love through chastisement, oh God. So we just say thank you, oh God, for your love, Father God. However you see fit, Father God, we will receive it in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we just ask right now that you cover us, Lord God. You send the people that are assigned to this ministry. Send the people for every one that goes that you send ten more, God. For every one that leaves, you send ten more, oh God. So we just say thank you, Father God, for sending them in droves, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for a heart of ministry, Father God, that will glorify your name, oh God. Father God, I thank you for an open heaven being released over the outpour and the members of the outpour, Father God. Thank you that this place will be a place of honor, oh God, where we will honor our leaders, Father God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. Release your fire in this place, oh God. Release your fire in this place, oh God. Release your fire in this place, oh God. Consume anything that is not like you, oh God. Consume anything that is not like you, oh God, Father God. I thank you for our hearts being postured for worship, oh God. 
Lord, we thank you for your presence in our life. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak to us on a personal level, God. Speak to us about us, God. Speak to us about our situation, God. Speak to us about our mindset. Speak to us about our attitude, God. Repentance is the word of the hour, God. And so we repent right now, God. We pour out, God, even on the altar right now, God. We give you our hearts, God. Purge us, God. Purify us, God. Detox us, God. Deliver us, oh God. Deliver us, oh God. Deliver us, oh God. Deliver us, oh God. Right now in the name of Jesus and we cry aloud and we swear not. 
we cry aloud and we spare not and we declare and decree that this will be a house of prayer. This will be a house of breakthrough. This will be a house of deliverance. This will be a house of signs, miracles, and wonders. This will be a house of prophecy, God. This will be your house in the name of Jesus. This is a time to speak in your prayer language. It's just between you and God at this moment. We 
snatch you back. We snatch back our joy. We snatch back our peace. We snatch back a sound mind. We snatch back our power in the name of Jesus. We snatch back our power in the name of Jesus. We snatch back our voice in the name of Jesus. The enemy's been trying to silence some of us, and we snatch our voices back. And we cry aloud and spare not. We come with a voice of triumph because the victory is already in our mouths. The victory is already in our homes. The victory is already in our bodies. The victory is already ours. We snatch it back in the name of Jesus. We ain't come to the go first. She ain't come to the first. We snatch it back in the name of Jesus. We won't settle for mediocrity. We won't settle for being average. We won't settle for just enough. We won't settle for survival. But you said you came that we might have life and life more abundantly. And so we claim abundance in every area. We claim abundance in our love lives. We claim abundance in our finances. We claim abundance in the spirit realm. God, we will not live on scraps. We will not live on crumbs. We will walk in abundance. We will talk in abundance. We will sing in abundance. We will pray in abundance, God. We will praise in abundance, God. Yes, Lord. We claim our abundance even now. Yes, God is speaking. He is speaking. He is speaking. Incline your ears to the words of the Lord. Incline your ears to the words of the Lord. He is moving. He is stirring. He is shaking. He is breaking down and building up. He is purging. He is purifying. And God, we thank you for every way you decide to move. We thank you for every word you decide to speak, God. We thank you, God, that you've shown up. And as always, you showed out, God. And we stand in tiptoe anticipation for what you're about to do. So we're going to try to move forward. Collect our offering. He's always given seed to a sower. Amen. And this is good ground, not just because it's the outpour, because it's a house that God decides to show up. And any house that God decides to show up, it means that he is counted worthy of his attention. And that's the type of soil you want to sow seed into. The type of seed that God is paying attention to. The type of soil that God can bless. And so if you want to give uh, via Cash App, it is the dollar sign, the outpour CC. Dollar sign B Outpour CC. For those who are watching this on replay, we thank you for tuning in and for supporting this ministry via the web. If you would like to give it Cash App, it is Dollar Sign B Outpour CC. For those who like to give via PayPal, it is www.outpourcc.org www.outpourcc.org and if anybody I would like to give via cash our little minister Harlan has the offering envelopes if you would like to see him over to my left he can take care of you we'll just give a moment for those who are giving Lord we thank you we thank you God for the opportunity to give we thank you for the faith to give, God, and we thank you for the ability to give. We thank you, God, that your word says that you would always give seed to the sower, God. And so we thank you for giving us hearts to sow because we know that that guarantees a seed, God. We know that that guarantees a harvest, God. And so we claim right now a spiritual, financial breakout in everyone's home that you would send contracts, that you would send scholarships and sponsorships, God, that you would give them employment and beyond even where they are, that you would give them entrepreneurship, God, that wherever there is lack, that you would not just come through with enough, God, but that you would come through with more than enough, God, that you would not just fill our cups, but that you would cause them to overflow, that you would give, let men give unto our bosom, God, give it to us shakedown, God, give it to us pressed together, God, give it to us running over. God. We thank you in advance, God, because we already know that our seeds are on assignment. 
that your favor is following our seed and that you will cause it to be fruitful and to multiply. To be fruitful and to multiply. To be fruitful and to multiply. So we thank you, God. Bless this house. Bless this seed, God, cause the harvest to come quickly. We pray that you would take over the rest of this service, God. Have your way, have your way, have your way, God. We won't stand in the way of what you're trying to do. We won't stand in the way of what you're trying to say, God. But we open our hearts, we open our ears, and we open our spirits to receive what your man servant has on his heart to say, God, we cover him even right now. We stretch our hands towards him, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, that you would put a word in his belly that will be full of rhema, full of revelation, that it will meet us exactly where we are, God, that the word will be transformed out of his mouth, God, and that it would hit us exactly where we need, God. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for his faithfulness. We thank you for his discipline. We thank you for his heart. Be with him as he feeds us. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise. Even if this is the head of the year, you shall be the head and not the tail. What does that mean? The head determines what the body is going to experience. The head determines what the rest of it shall be like. So everything that's coming up after you shall be determined by what you do. You are the determining factor on what's going to come into your life. You are the one that's going to make the decision on what is you. You won't be subject to anybody else's opinion. You won't be subject to anything else that's going to. But you shall be the head. You shall be the decision maker. You shall be the determining factor. You are the one that's going to dictate what it is that's going to come and what's going to go in your life. You shall be the head and not the tail. It also means you won't be whipped. You won't be whipped. You won't be defeated. Come on now. You won't lose. Okay. Nobody can touch you. Yes. Yes. The enemy can't touch you. Yes. The enemy can't touch you. Yes. Somebody ought to shout off limits in this place. Off limits. Off limits in this place. Because you're the head and not the tail. Yes. Bless you. I am grateful for this day. I am grateful for what God has doing and doing in this place. I am grateful. Can anybody sense the open heaven that is in this place? Can anybody sense the glory of the living God in this place? Anybody else that can feel that he's moving? Oh, ain't even open the book. Haven't said a word. But from the moment we came in with our attention, set looking to the hill from which comes our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Is there anybody that understands that God was ready? Glory, glory, glory. 
glory, 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 glory. Come on, let's be a God who prays in this place. With the fruit of your lips, come on and bless it. Come on and bless it with the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We give you the honor and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. It feels good in here, y'all. It feels good in here. Y'all came in here hungry today, boy. Y'all, y'all wasn't playing today. You didn't come for no shape, form, or bed. I like it. Y'all keep that same energy next week. Amen. Amen. This is how we're supposed to. The Bible says to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Why do we wait till we get here to try to start praising? We're supposed to come in with the praise. We're supposed to be thankful unto him. We're supposed to bless his name. Am I, I, you, you act like I'm the only one that understands how good God has been. But today y'all got the full revelation. Y'all got the full revelation today. Hallelujah. Those of you that don't know, this is Rosh Hashanah. That literally means this is one. That literally means this is one of the New Years that the Hebrew people celebrated, and this is one of those feasts that God set. This is an appointed time that God sets to meet with His people. There are appointed times where every year God has a time of the year that He sets an appointment with His people. How many of you are glad that you have an appointment with the Divinity? Yeah. 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 We have an appointment with the Sovereign Lord, and this is one of those times. This is a time that there is a transition. Even in the business realm, there are a lot of businesses that end their fiscal year around this time. They don't necessarily follow the Gregorian calendar, but they even recognize that there is something around this time that means we need to shift. There's a lot of min meanings behind this time of year, and I can't wait. One of the main things about this time of year is how many of you know that all of the feasts point to Jesus? Yes. All of the feasts point to Jesus. And so, in the finished work of the cross, one of the things that we, uh, God had us repeating over and over again last week was, it is finished. Yes. It is finished. Everything that we're going to receive Everything that we're going to walk in, everything that we're going to apprehend, everything that God has planned, purpose, and designed for us to have has already been accomplished by Jesus on the cross over 2,000 years ago. That means that it is done. We're not waiting on God to do something new. We're waiting to step into what God has already done. We're not waiting on God to move on our behalf. He's already moved. We're walking, waiting to, uh, to manifest what has already been accomplished in the spirit. We're waiting on earth to catch up to heaven. Because in the heavens, everything is done. Jesus is already seated in heavenly places. With the, you're, he's already seated. His enemies have already been defeated. He's already led captivity captive. So we are just walking out something that's already been accomplished. Amen. Yeah. Turn with me to Leviticus 23. Um, and we're going to start at verse 23 and 25. I just have a few things that I want to talk about for this time of year. And this is the New King James Version. And it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And so I just want to pull out a few, I want to talk for a minute and pull out a few truths about trumpets. Truths about the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. You may be seated. You guys rock with me, all right? So this is a time. This, this particular scripture makes reference to the Feast of Trumpets. In modern times, it's called Rosh Hashanah. And what this means is, this is the time, this is one of the four times that Jewish, that Hebrew people celebrate the New Year. They have different times that are uh, celebrated for New Year's for different measuring reasons, right? Um, there's one that they use to measure a uh, king's rule. There is one that God said when he brought them out of Egypt, this will be the first month of the first year for you. That's not this time. This is a time that God uses to measure the New Year when it comes to measuring seasons, when it comes to measuring people, and when it comes to measuring legal documents or contracts. So this is a business new year. 
They said there are very, there are some things that I want to talk about. The word Rosh means head. It is the captain of the year. So when God says that just as this is the uh, head of the year, you shall be the head and not the tail, that means that you will be the captain. You will be the leader. You will be the one that dictates and determines and decides what's going to go throughout the rest of this year. And your Rosh Hashanah, this time of year, how you begin this year is going to dictate the same. We know that in the natural, right? Every January 1st, we always make this little cliche, how you begin the year is how you're going to finish it. So we try to be on a date. We try to do, we be with the ones that we love. We try to be in church. We try to do all of these things to make sure that we're beginning the year in a certain way. And it's the same thing now. We're just doing it in a spiritual new year. Yes. In the realm of the spirit, we are setting ourselves up for what is going to follow in the preceding months, in the following months. Amen. And it makes sense so far. All right. So we are, the, we are in the captain, the leader of the year now. Notice that it begins, in, according to verse 23, in the seventh month. The first day of the seventh month. What does that mean? Seven is the number of completion. It's on the seventh day that God arrested because he was done from all his work. It says that it's the seventh month. We will do no customary work, no servant work. We will enter into a Sabbath rest. So what does that mean? That means we are entering into a season where God is expecting us to rest on his finished work. That means that what we are going to receive, we won't get it by labor. We won't get it by toil. We won't get it by work. We won't get it through our own efforts. But we will receive by faith in what Jesus has already done. Is there any reason? That he had us shouting over and over again that it is finished last week. Yes. See, we keep toiling to receive something that Jesus has already given us. Yes. And we talked about last week how that is the most frustrating thing in the world. To look for something that you're already holding in your hand. Yes. Amen. And so we're expecting to receive something that God has already given us. And we need to rest in the finished work of what he has done. Not work to receive. That is like me trying to... If I were to give... Um, Pastor Christy, a car is coming. If I was to get Pastor Christy a car and she goes out and works to try to come up with the down payment, why are you working to get something that I've already given you? Am I making sense to anybody? And so we, we become a frustrated people. And so in this time of year, we are moved, we are led to trust in the finished work of of Jesus. How many of you understand that if what Jesus did didn't accomplish it, then you can't add nothing to it? If the blood of Jesus wasn't enough to purchase it, then there's nothing that your blood, that your blood, your sweat, your tears are going to be able to add to it. The best that heaven had is the only thing that was up, the only thing that was able to purchase what it is that we. And so, why is it that we think in our arrogance and in our pride that we can add to it? The price has been paid. The price has been paid. Amen. Amen. The price has been paid. Amen. Amen. The price has been paid. Amen. Amen. So there's nothing that we're going to accomplish through our blood, sweat, and tears that Jesus hasn't already accomplished through his. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So everything that God is doing in our lives from this point forward will be resting upon the completed work of Glory. Jesus. The completed work of Jesus. He didn't leave this thing half done. He didn't leave this thing half done. It is a finished work. And so we are beginning this year changing our mind, resting on the fact that Jesus did it and we're walking into it. Yes. Amen. Yes. We are Y'all kind of quiet in here. Yeah. We are beginning this year changing our mind, going from thinking that we have to work to earn it to trusting that Jesus bought it for us. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. This is not a time for labor. This is not a time for labor. We still come into God with this servant's mentality. We still come into God trying to earn. We're still coming to God expecting to work to be received. When he says work because you have been received. He says because you've been forgiven, you should forgive. He said because you have been loved, you should love. He said because you and all of this stuff is because of what we already have. We're now working to receive. We're working from what we have already received. We talked about last week. We're not toiling for victory. We're not warring, fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. We've already won. 
We're enforcing what we've already been given. We're already in, we're already victorious. We're already the winners. We're already the overcomers. It has already been accomplished and done. We are not trying to make it happen. It's done. We are working from the place of it has already been done. That is the thing that we have to keep in mind. It is already done. That is the word for this year. It is already done. It's finished. Stop trying to finish something that's already done. Amen. All right. So, we talked about that last week. We're entering into a year of trusting what God has planned for our life is done by faith, and everything has already been accomplished, right? Even Jesus said, like, even the Bible says that from the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Before he was born, it was already done. So the manifestation came after it had already happened in the spirit. Anybody see, everybody see that? Before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Well, the world hadn't been created yet, so Jesus hadn't been born yet, so how could he have been slain? But it was done in the realm of the spirit already. And what had to happen was earth had to catch up to what had already been accomplished in eternity. That is the mindset that we have to keep forever. That is everything that we are going to walk in, everything that we're going to hold, apprehend, obtain, get from God. We have to remember it's done in the spirit. Didn't Jesus say whatever you bind in earth will already be bound in heaven? Yeah. Whatever you loose on earth will have already been loosed in heaven? Yeah. Didn't he say thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven? Didn't he say he's already led captivity captive? He's already defeated the enemy? He's, so why is it? So we have to keep that same mindset when it comes to everything in the spirit. It's done in the spirit. We're just playing this thing out. Yeah. It's like it's a fixed fight. It is a fixed fight. Just because the fight has already been fixed, just because the winner has already been turned before the bell rings, doesn't mean that the fighter doesn't have to get in the ring. You still got to fight. You still got to play this thing out. You just already know what the end is going to be. So it doesn't matter what the doctor says. You know what the end is going to be. It doesn't matter what the banker says. You know what the end is going to be. It doesn't matter what your employer says. You already know what the end is going to be. It doesn't matter what your family says. You know what the end is going to be. It doesn't even matter what you say. Because the word is already determined what the end is going to be. God said, I have set the end from the very beginning. Before I began this thing, I determined what it is going to be. And his word shall not return unto him boy it shall not fail so whatever he says it simply is going to be so why is it that we're waffling and wavering because we haven't gotten the revelation that it is already finished we're waiting for something to be done when god has already finished it so we have to shift our mind that no matter what it looks like, it's already been determined. The head has already been set. The decision has already been made. The course has already been charted. Doesn't matter what it looks like in 2019. Yeah. Before I leave this earth, I know what I'm going to have. Yeah. I know what I'm going to walk in. I know what I'm going to... It doesn't matter what the doctors are telling me today. I know tomorrow I'm walking in healing. I know that I'm going to... Well, I know the God for why. Not because I have so much faith, but because I know what Jesus has already done. What he's already done. And my Bible says that God be true and every man be a liar. So it is done. Yes, come on. It is done. We are entering into a season of rest. Yes, of rest. Yes. We've been working and running yes. and toiling yes. in our own strength. And we're wondering why we're so beat down. And we're wondering why we're so tired. And we're wondering why we're so fatigued. And we're so frustrated. And it's because we're trying to do something that has already been done. The wall has already been built. The house has already been built. Yeah. Everything has already been set. And you keep trying to repeat the efforts in an attempt to complete something that God has already completed. And we never think that that is the, most, that is the utmost level of pride and arrogance that we can add to what Jesus has already done. That we can add to that, we, that he needs some help to finish what he's already done. 
We know that you said it is finished on the cross, but you still need me to do this right here. And I understand that the Bible says that faith without works is dead. But once again, you're working from the place that it is done, not to make it done. You have to. There is a, it's a small difference, but it is a huge difference. It is a huge difference. It is the difference between someone. It is the difference between those of you with children. Your children behaving somewhere a, a certain way because they're your child, and they're behaving a certain way to be your child. Am I making sense in this place? There is a difference. We are behaving or we have to make the mindset, the mental shift. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I no longer call you servants. So why is it that we keep relegating ourselves back to this place of servitude? So the word of the Lord says, you shall do no customary work. That word means servant work, no servile work. You won't do anything to serve anyone else. You won't do anything to serve another purpose. But you shall rest. There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. You shall rest from your labor. And I know that for some of us, some of us higher achieving people, some of us people that came from uh, families that are less than holy, that have brokenness, and you, you may be used to having to work to to attain, work to get your mother's favor, work to get your father's favor, work to be approved, work to hear I love you, work to be, and not all of that has to cease. It has to stop today. We are entering into a time of rest, and if you can't rest in it, you can't receive it. Because God can't reward your labor. He can't reward your labor. And the Bible says that that which is done in the flesh is flesh. And in flesh dwells no good thing. So we are entering into a season of rest where we shall no longer serve, we shall no longer waver, labor, but we will stand to receive based on what Jesus has done. We have an inheritance that God has willed to us. He has made us co-inheritors, co co uh, joint heirs with Christ. Not because of what we've done, but completely because of what Jesus has done. Amen. Amen. And so this time of year, biblically, is referred to more often as the Feast of Trumpets. And we see in the first that it is celebrated by the blowing of a shofar. Now, shofars are horns that are made from a ram's horn. They take a ram's horn, clean it out, and they blow it, and it turns, makes a trumpet sound. All right? Now, even this, is a picture of the finished work of Jesus. Why? Because the ram is used because it is symbolic of the ram that was sacrificed in Isaac's place. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You remember Abraham. You remember when God says, so, I'm giving you a son, I need you to sacrifice him unto me. And when he got ready to kill his son, God says, stay your hand now that I know that you won't even withhold this from me. Look over there, there's a ram caught in the thickets by its horn by its horn sacrifice that unto me so what is that that is still a picture of jesus that is a picture of jesus being sacrificed in our stead it is a picture of jesus dying in our place replacing us guess what if we replace if he replaced us then we had to have replaced him if he took our sin then we had to take his righteousness if he took our sickness we had to take his healing if he took our chastisement we had to take his peace if he took our weakness, he had to take our, we had to take his uh, strength. If he took our depression, our sadness, our anger, all of it, then we had to take his peace and his joy. Amen. So there is a, re there is a, 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 um, a replacement that this that season means. So we are replacing what we were meant to receive with what Jesus has meant, was meant to receive. What Jesus made the way for us to receive. What Jesus provided for us to receive. Amen. It is also the new year for people, animals, contracts, and seasons. It is the new year for seasons. So this is a time where seasons change. This is a time where seasons change. This is a time where, they, in, in the Bible days, they were sowing. This is the seed time. This is why they, it determined what the rest of the year was going to be. Because as you sowed, you would determine your harvest. Y'all catch that? Yes. This is a time for your season to change based upon the actions that you take at the head of the year. 
So if you want a different kind of year, then there are different kind of actions that you need to take at the beginning of the year. Your determining factor is at this time of year. Amen. Now, somebody ought to be a little bit more grateful that they have the ability, the power, the wherewithal to determine what the rest of their year is going to look like based upon what they do now. What? What is the work that you're going to do? You're going to stand in faith. You're going to trust God. You're going to believe God for the finished work that what God has done, he has done and doesn't need you to add into it. You're going to stand respecting to receive what Jesus has done for you. You're going to sow. You're going to sow your love. You're going to sow your time. You're going to sow financially. You're going to sow into God. You're going to sow into the kingdom of God. You're going to Determine and dictate what the rest of your year is going to look like because now is the time for you to change your season. Yes. Your season can change based upon what happens this time of the year. So this is the beginning of the new year, but it is also the ending of the old. I don't know about y'all, but I am grateful that there's some things that are ending in my life. I am grateful for the ending of what happened yesterday. I am grateful for the ending of what I faced yesterday. I am grateful for the ending of last season. But this season right here, this season right here, this season right here, though, this season right here is about to be some, this some, it's about to pop off this season right here. I'm expecting God to do some things this season right here. This season right here is about to change the whole game. You thought you knew what song was like last week. But this season right here, you thought you knew what was happening at the outpour last week. But this season right here, you thought you knew what was going on in life. Last week. But this season right here, though, this is a whole new thing. This is a game changer over here. This is a game changer over here. We over here. There's an open door and I plan to make the most of everything that God, he said, let's set before you an open door. Guess what? I, for one, am walking in. You can come with me if you want, but please understand, Sean Lyles is walking up into this thing. Yesterday is gone and behold, I do a new thing. So this is the year. This is the time of year that things change seasons shift we're going from the old to the new it is a restarting of the clock when it comes to our harvest it is a restarting of the clock when it comes to our contracts and our legal obligations let's talk about that for a little bit because some of us think that we have some legal obligations to the enemy some of us think that because of the things that we've done and the things that we've opened ourselves up to that we owe the enemy and we have to work and we have to do these things. That Some of us have given, some of us have been, by our actions have given the enemy legal access. But this year, because this is a new shifting of the year, because we are going from what was going on last year to the finished work of Jesus, then whatever access he had last night ended. Whatever access he had last night, whatever doors we opened yesterday are closed today. Whatever entry points he had yesterday are closed today. This is a brand new year. The clock is restarting. The lamb has been slain. And we are walking into what God has prepared for us today. Prepared. Prepared. Up. Past tense. Again. Already done. The contract is broken. The legal obligations are over. I owe you nothing, Satan. I owe you nothing, Satan. I am reminded that my Jesus paid it all. So whatever I've done, no matter whatever I could do, has already been handled. The bill has already been paid. The debt has already been taken care of. As a matter of fact, Jesus was an overpayment. Why do you think he was raised again? Jesus overpaid the debt. That's why he was able to be resurrected. Amen. 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 So the contracts are over. The season has shifted. And we are entering into the feast, the fall feast time. This is the time of the new year. And just because I don't want to, I want to let you know what's coming. I want to touch on this really quickly. And I want to get off of it. And I don't want to spend too much time, but I want to acknowledge because it's coming. This is also the time of Yom Kippur. Yeah. So in two weeks, we will be celebrating Yom Kippur. I, I believe it's on the um, October 14th um, um, or the 9th. I think it's October 9th. 
Um, this is uh, some young from Forest Common. That is the Day of Atonement. That is the day that all of the Hebrew people would get together and they would make the sacrifices for their sins. And for the next year, their sins would be covered if their sacrifice was accepted. What does that mean? Our sacrifice was accepted. Jesus was our sacrifice. He was our sacrifice. And he was accepted. So this seals the year that we are beginning, that we are going into. It is covered by the blood of Jesus. And Hebrews says it like this, that um, they had to make a sacrifice every year because the blood of bulls and goats wasn't able to cover, but the blood of Jesus, our Jesus, our high priest, was able to enter in one time. And with his blood, he was able to make a sacrifice once and for all of humanity. So this thing has been sealed. The feast of all the race pointed to Jesus and the finished work and what he wants to accomplish in us. And so because we have been atoned, because the year has been shifted, because we're entering into a new season, because the contracts have been canceled, because all of our legal obligations to the enemy have been settled and dealt with on the cross of Jesus, now we are able to enter into a new season, a season where we have been redeemed, a season of righteousness, and a season where we can be delivered, set way into the purge. And so God is setting us up. We did not plan this. God is setting us up to bring us into a new level of deliverance for the year that is coming. There was a reason. He started talking to us last week, of last month about vision. For four weeks, he dealt with us about vision and making sure that our eyes were clean. And so he's going to continue that train and continue that train of thought for the rest of the year. So as we're entering into, as we cross over from uh, into Rosh Hashanah, into the new year, we're going to go through the Day of Atonement. We're going to pass through the sacrifice of Jesus. We're going to pass on under the blood of Jesus, remembering that we've been covered, that we've been washed, that we've been redeemed, that we've been set free by the blood of Jesus and not through any efforts of our own. We're also going to continue to get the, uh, our vision together for what God has planned for this year. Amen. 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 Am I helping anybody in this place today? Amen. Amen. And so we're coming into this Feast of Trumpets now. We talked about last week, and one of the things that we talked about last week, and it's funny how I promise you last week wasn't planned, and this week was, I had no idea. But one of the things that God dealt with me to, to share about was the difference between shouting unto God and wailing unto God. And the Bible says that we are to raise our voice like a trumpet, yes. that we're to shout like with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Amen. And so this is a time for us to enter into a season. We're going to shift from wailing to shouting, yes. shouting with victory. Shouting with victory. When they were passing around Jericho, they shouted and the walls came down. It was the sound of their praise. It was the sound of their voice. It was the trumpet in their voice that, was, that released the power of God. And so we are going to go from wailing to trumpeting, from wailing to shouting, to shouting with the voice of victory, to shouting. And so the trumpet has a whole other significance. I am not going to touch on that today. Um, I do believe that we are going to talk about that later on, but I'm not going to touch on that today. But the trumpet has a whole other significance. Amen. The trumpet has a whole other level of significance. Amen. And so what we want to make sure that we are doing is we are raising our voice with the shout of victory, with the trump of victory, like a trumpet. The Bible says that if you don't, if, if, if the trumpet doesn't make a clear call, how will they know how to respond? And so some of our calls haven't been clear. And we're wondering why heaven hasn't responded. So we're changing from the wail to the shout. Amen. How many of you guys are excited about what God is going to do in this new year? How many of you guys are ready for what he's going to do in this new year? How many, don't fool me now, how many of you guys are grateful for this changing of the season? He is changing of the season. Y'all was quiet when I said that part, but I don't know about you, but it's some stuff I'm trying to leave in last season. It's some stuff that I need to leave in last season. It's some stuff that I dare not carry into this season, but I am crossing over. We've been saying, and, 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 and do you see how God has been lining up the last few services? Do you remember just a few a few weeks ago, I was praying, and I was praying about crossing over. Pastor Christy got up here, she preached about crossing over. And here it is two, three weeks later, and now is the time for us to cross over. I kid you not, we planned none of this, but there is a synchronicity in the realm of the Spirit where God is going to confirm His Word, and He's going to keep a trend. God is not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's not spastic. 
He's not spastic. He's not all over the place. But he speaks linearly, line upon line, yeah. precept upon precept. Yeah. And so he's been preparing us for this moment for the last month or more. And he's going to continue this on into next month. Baby, will you join me up here, please? And he's going to continue this on this uh, even more. I believe the Lord has given you something. Okay. Yes. Days like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, um, you may think that's kind of weird because not every church talks about these about these um, holy holidays, but we find them very important because of their Hebraic and their biblical significance. Not because we're trying to ascribe to any Judaism or things of that nature, but the reality is that those times are important and just because um, society changed the calendar does not mean they shifted how things operate in the spirit. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so before I even know about all this stuff, um, my family would tell you every end of September, October, I would start to feel like I'm already in a new year. And by the time December came and regular New Year's was coming, I was already somewhere else. And I have seen for myself um, that when you sacrifice some, some time with God, at the end of this month and sacrifice your October, that the Lord puts you in a position to know where you're going and where you're supposed to be for 2020. Um, October was when I got the word of the Lord that I was supposed to be moving to Dallas. And so by December 31st, I was already here. Yeah. Last year in October, I was, um, I prayed and I said, Lord, I want you to bless me to be able to sow a seed of a thousand dollars. It's not something I had ever previously done. I had done large numbers, but it had never reached a thousand. And, and because October represents a fiscal shift, I said, I want to sow a thousand dollar seed. A week later, I got a random check in the mail from back home. My brother called me and said, this is this, this check in the mail for $2,500 from this old company that had overcharged me. And I guess they did it to a lot of other people, got sued and without me knowing, they had issued me a refund at something way back in the early 2000s. So I sold that seed in October, that $1,000 seed, because it was a certain season that I knew right around this time, whatever I do now is going to shift the, the rest of my next yes, year. Yes, we yes. sold the seed together, and then two weeks later, uh, Pastor Sean's apostle called him and said, it's time for you to start your church. Now, he could have had that word in him for him way prior than October. But I believe because the season shifts, that things that have been on hold or held up or hindered, like he said, when that season shifts, there are new contracts that are being released. Because what the enemy does is even like he did with Job, the Lord said, you can have him for a season. But then the Lord already knew there's a season where I'm going to stop you and you have to let him go. And then he has to get double for what he had to get held up. And so there is seasonal changes that are happening right now. And we want you guys to take it seriously because everybody else is just going to be catching up in December. God's yeah. trying to show you where he wants to place you now. And so if you're feeling like old things are no longer working, old business strategies, um, you're not as happy on that job, certain friendships just don't match where you are anymore, certain relationships are just not fulfilling anymore, even the way that you've been praying and the way that you're used to seeking God is not the same because that has ended. And God is trying to dispatch something new even for how you relate to him. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Yes. That's a spiritual mindset that you have to have because that's not natural to think that. The natural is to think, ooh, when I get that new, you know, that new relationship, that's what's going to be really lit. But no, the new one can't come if the old one still exists. So I didn't, I didn't, the release for my husband didn't come when he showed up. The release came when I let the old one go. Because the old one represented a hindrance. And so as soon as I cut that and ended that, that's what ushered in the beginning. So better is the end of a thing than the beginning of a thing. And so that's what we're operating in right now. It's a new year because so many old things are coming to the end. And so um, as we were going to be talking about the trumpet and the shofar, um, this is a day of sounding and blasting. <coughs> And so if that's the season for sounding and blasting, then that means this is not the time to be quiet. Yes, yes, yes. There's a time for being quiet and to just watch and observe and pray, you know, and, and make your, your decisions and your plans quietly. And then there's a time where you have to start sounding out loud. Yes. Some of you have giftings and callings, and you've been cultivating them in quietness. Yeah. 
And so this is the season where you can't be a small, still voice or a whisper. Yeah. This is the time for you to be a trumpet. Yeah. And he mentioned a scripture that I didn't even know he was going to mention. It says, but if the soldiers sound a trumpet in a way that is not understood, then no one moves for battle. Because how it used to work in those times is that they sounded the trumpet a certain way so that they could know exactly what to do on the battlefield. Right. If it was a confusing sound, they would just stay still. Yes. And so what we have to be sure we're doing right now is not giving God confusing sounds. He needs the sound of a trumpet. Right. If you're still coming to him wailing like he's been talking about, then the Lord knows you're not delivered yet. And so then I can't release you to the next thing if I can hear in your voice that you're still coming from a place of travail and wailing. So we have to shift from travailing to trumpeting, like he said. And so you have to find that voice in you because God is looking for trumpets. He's looking not just for you as individuals to be trumpets, but the word says that the house of Zion should be a trumpet. And so even earlier while I was praying, um, I mentioned that we will be a house of Zion that is trumpeteering for the Lord. And so that means when people come to the outpour, they're not hearing a mourn. They're not hearing a travail from a place of, of grief, but they're hearing a sound of a trumpet because we already know that we won the victory. Like he said, the fight is fixed, but we still have to fight. You still got to get in the ring, amen? And so we're still fighting, but we're fighting from victory, not for victory, amen? And so when it comes to these trumpets and it comes to the shofar, they blew it a certain way. Uh, we've talked about this. There are certain beliefs that you had to have a certain anointing to even blow this trumpet without a set. Because if you blew it without that certain, um, that breath, that ruah of God, it would not be able to even make a sound. And so that some of us have been trying to blow on certain areas of our lives and it's been making no sound and making no movement. But this is a new season where God is giving you a new fresh wind yes. so that you can blow on dead areas yes. of your life, stagnant areas of your life. And this time it will move. This time it yes. will make yes. a sound. Rosh Hashanah is supposed to be the celebration of the creation of Adam and Eve, the creation of mankind. But mankind would have meant nothing if God didn't blow that ruah, that, right. that breath of God that to make them a living soul. Amen. Yeah. And so this is time where we celebrate God breathing on us yeah. so that we have enough to breathe on the things around us. Amen. Yeah. And so we are a trumpet. And you have to remember that the trumpet could only be blown if the ram's horn was cleaned out. And so what the Lord linked for me is that if we're not cleaned out, if we're not cleansed, if we're not purged, because we're about to do a series starting next week called The Purge. A lot of you want to be trumpets, but you can't get a sound out because you haven't been gutted out. You haven't been cleansed, you haven't been purged, so that's what we're trying to do so that your vessel can be pure enough to make a sound, amen? And so this is what the trumpets represent. So this Rosh Hashanah um, represents a lot of things. And so clear as day, um, last week while we were preparing for this, we wanted to prepare early um, before vacation because we didn't want to get um, sidetracked from what the word of the Lord was going to be. Um, I mentioned to a uh, pastor that the Lord told me clear as day um, that there is another trumpet that will be sounding that is coming and is closer than ever before. And so while everyone is celebrating Rosh Hashanah for its historical value, there is a future anointing attached to this day because another trumpet will be sounding, amen? And that is the trumpet of the Lord's return. Yeah. This is an eschatological house, meaning that this is a house of the end times. Yeah. Our, the yeah. name alone indicates that we are an end times ministry. Yeah. It says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters will prophesy. We are called the outpour because we want to be a part of that pouring out in the last days. This means this has to be a ministry that unlike some others, we remind people that God is sending his son back for his people. And that the whole work of ministry is for the saving of souls, not for us to have big houses and cars and to get married and all. Those things are nice, but there has to be a focus to remind people that when the Lord comes back, you want to be able to be snatched up, to be raptured up, 
that there is going to be a sound of the trumpet where the trumpets are going to sound by the angels and he's going to gather his elect yeah, from the four God. winds of the heavens and he's going to snatch them up and it's going to be indicated by the sound of a trumpet. Yeah. And so as I was praying about that, I'm like, Lord, so why would you want to relate that now? Because people get a little nervous when you start talking <laughs> about the coming back of the Lord. And he said people need to be more nervous because they've gotten so slack. They've gotten so comfortable. There's no longer a fear. So I just want to read a scripture because um, the sounding of the shofars are amazing. Us being trumpets are amazing, but God is not calling us to be trumpets just so that we can make noise. Yes. One thing about God is any sound he puts in the earth realm has a reason attached to it. Amen? Amen. And so a trumpet is, is coming to blow. We don't know the day or the hour. But God didn't say that we couldn't know the season. Yes. So we don't know the moment. It could be right now after we leave church. It could be another 100, 500,000 years from now. The point of it is, is he says, but I'm going to give you indicators. And that is going to stop with a trumpet. Now, the thing is, we don't imagine this because no one talks about it. We don't imagine what is this trumpet going to sound like and am I going to be able to hear it? And so what we have to do is be more sensitive in the spirit that this trumpet is coming. And you may be good, but what about your family? And what about your friends? And that doesn't prick you in your heart. You know why? Because heaven and hell is a figment of our imagination. We say that it's our faith, but it's really a figment. You know why? Because if you love anybody, the thought of them going to hell will burden your soul yeah. so bad yeah. that you will be doing yeah. anything that you could oh to God. make sure that they confess Jesus as their Lord right. and Savior. Not that God is real. Many people believe in God. Yeah. People have an issue with the Christ being their Lord yeah. and their Savior. Yes. Many people believe. Demons believe. That's what the Bible tells yeah. us. That even the demons believe and not just believe and tremble. Yeah. Which means they're smart enough to know they should even be afraid. But they're not submitted to and so if you really believe in a heaven and a hell, then we would want to be those trumpets for people. Amen? So I'm going to read this scripture. And it's not because I wanted to, but the Lord said to remind the people of the final trumpet. Because as far as our dispensation is concerned, that's the most important trumpet. Yeah. We're not out blowing shofars anymore. We don't have to sound a trumpet for real battle in, in this world. Those things are taken care of. But what we do need to be as a house of Zion is a trumpet to remind the earth, the Lord is coming back and you have to be ready. Yes. And so um, I just want to read this scripture because I haven't heard this scripture read maybe in 20 years. If it will come up. It's Matthew 24, 31. It says in Matthew in 24, 31, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, one end of heaven to the other. All right, and so when when we're looking at this scripture, the Lord is saying, you know, the people have come to him and said, Well, when are the end of things going to be? And the Lord starts, you know, talking to them about you're going to see this and you're going to see that. All right, but what, what I really want to focus on is verse, starting at verse 36, 24 and 36. He says, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now, this is where it relates to us, okay, because we are in this day. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So what he's saying is just like in the days of Noah, no one's going to be paying attention. People are going to be eating and drinking. We're not talking about as far as it having to be an alcoholic type of thing. What this symbolizes is people are going to be making their flesh content. They're going to be satisfying their flesh. They're going to be eating what they like. They're going to be drinking what they like. They're going to be filling themselves with what they like. And no one was paying attention. No one was there building the ark the whole time. People are thinking he's crazy because he's preparing for something they've never seen before. 
What we're doing here at the outport is we are trying to build an ark, yes. a house of safety for what God is preparing to do, even if it's something that the people have never seen before. That's yeah. what we're trying to do here. And it says, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. That's how the coming of the Son of Man will be. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Mm. You don't want to be the one left in that field. Amen. Because here's the reality. You can know the Lord and still get left. Come on now. Now, this may be the only church that may say that. I may be the only preacher that may say that. But you can know the Lord and still get left. That's not enough to just know him. There needs to be relationship with him that is affecting your lifestyle. And not just your lifestyle, but your heart. Because there are many other religions that have very disciplined lifestyles. No eating, no drinking, no fornicating. Some religions, they don't even promote marriage. That's how, quote unquote, pure they want you to be. So it's not even just about lifestyle. Your heart has to be converted. Because it will be a shame to be in the field and know the Lord and still get left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken and the other left. It says, watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. But know this, he says, you won't know the day or the hour, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And so stop thinking that you can premeditate when God is going to do it. There are all these theories out there that, oh, you know, once this happens with Israel, then that will be when it happens. Or it's not going to happen until, you know, 500, 1,000 years from now. So that's not something that we have to worry about. But the Bible is telling us he is coming when you don't expect it. Yeah. When you don't expect it. So that means that it's going to catch you off guard if you're not on guard. Amen? Amen. It says, so know that if the if the master knew when the thief was going to come, he'd already be waiting there so that it, he could prevent it. So the Lord knows that. He knows that, hey, if I knew when the Lord was coming back, I could just get my life together at the last minute. Mm. And so do we think that the Lord is going to allow that in the earth realm? He wants people that are seeking him with a pure heart not to see how much can I get away with before he comes. Yeah. That's good. It says, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his master made ruler over the household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, the, le the master is delayed in his coming. And that's what we've been saying in our hearts. The master is delaying his coming. The Lord's not coming back anytime soon. Yeah. I'm still yeah. too young. I still haven't got married. Huh. I still haven't had children. I still haven't seen that business pop off the way I thought it would. I still haven't seen that ministry grow. But we don't know the day or the hour. Yes. And yes. it says, the foolish servant says in his heart, my master is delayed in his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. And at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I mention that because the Bible tells us here that the angels are going to sound the trumpet. And we need to be ready for that trumpet sounding. What is interesting is that how does this relate to Rosh Hashanah? Rosh Hashanah doesn't have a set date every year. Why? Because they have to look for the new moon. And it's not guaranteed when the new moon is going to come. And the way that the Hebrews work, their days start at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And so how it used to work in historical times, before they could <coughs> consider it officially Rosh Hashanah, they would call, the Sanhedrin would call only the appointed people who had proven that they know how to watch the times and the seasons to see the weather and say, has it officially shifted for the new moon? And so that was a version of them not knowing the day or the hour. Yes. That's good. Because they didn't know what it That's was going good. to be. And so even now, the dates for Rosh Hashanah, they shift 
based on what they see, the signs in heaven, the new moon. And so that is what we're doing in the earth realm today. We are watching because we don't know the day or the hour. Yes, that's All we can do is trust the teachers and the pastors, the evangelists, the apostles, the prophets that we feel in our heart of hearts have been called of the Lord. And those people, if they have any discernment, was saying, watch and discern because behold, I stand at the door. And that is what I'm saying as a prophetess of God. I believe yes. myself to be a prophetess. And if any of you guys trust that gift in me, yes. I am yes. telling you, we don't know, we don't know the day or the hour, but we do know the season. Right. Mm -hmm. And with all that we see going on in the world, with his people and not just the people, but the earth itself. Yeah. The Bible says that the earth itself is groaning for his return. The earth is groaning in the form of hurricanes and tornadoes and all these earthquakes in diverse places, fires that are coming out of nowhere. The earth itself is crying out for the Lord's return. And so I am saying that behold, he knocks at the door and he's going to send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and gather his elect. Now, the danger in that is the Bible also says that even his very elect are going to be deceived. And so you may pride yourself, and I think I'm the elect of God. I know his word. I know the Bible. I know scripture. I know this. I know that the very elect are going to be deceived. And so this is an hour where you don't just want to be the elect. You want to be the discerning. You want to be the discerning. Because some of the things that we're praying for don't mean anything to God. Because he's looking at, is that helping anybody prepare for my return? Is that business that you're starting going to help people for his return? Is that ministry that you want to do, that platform you want to be on, those children you want to have, that marriage you want to have, is it anything in that that is going to be preparing people for his return? The return is imminent. That's not changing. What can change is your status in are you going to go with him at that return, at that second coming? There's so much that has not been taught on this that we walk even as Christians assuming we have time. Assuming we have time. And so we're putting off um, little things that could make a big difference in our level of influence to help impact other people because we keep thinking we have more time. We keep thinking that we have more time. We assume that tomorrow is promised. When the Bible tells us, don't even think about tomorrow. It says, don't even think about what you're going to wear tomorrow because that ain't even guaranteed. Now, by faith, through hope, we hope we'll be here. But if you thought about it today, have you been a trumpet to those around you? Are there coworkers that you've been working with for five years that you've never, not even one time said, do you know Christ? Are there family members that you talk to all the time and listen to the dirty details of their life or what they're doing? The fornicating, the drinking, the sinning, the, the cursing, the everything else. Do you even stop to say, now listen now, you know I love you and I'm not judging you. But we got to make sure that should the Lord come tonight, you would be ready. Yeah. When's the last time you asked anybody, would you be ready? Have you been a trumpet? Because we want to be a trumpet for everything else. We want to be the one that everybody sees teaching and preaching and praying and prophesying. We want to be seen singing. We want all the glamorous time types of, 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 of having the mic in our hands. But we can be a trumpet without a mic. Amen. And so how the Lord is looking at it is I've given you an opportunity to be a trumpet at your job, to be a trumpet for your church, to be a trumpet to your family. And we don't trumpeteer unless we can be seen doing it. Because we don't want to be heard. We want to be seen. We want to be seen. We don't want to be heard. And so I admonish you to start sounding the alarm, sounding the alarm, to be the trumpet. Yes. Because while you're trumpeteering for the Lord, he could be preparing to bless you. While you're working on that ministry, writing that book, every form of communication is a version of a trumpet. And so while you are hesitating on the things God has called you to say, whether in written form or vocally, you are silencing yourself as a trumpet and the way you think you're going to trumpeteer will be held back from you. Because we don't get to decide how we want to trumpet. All we have to know is what message do you want us to say? Yes. Yes. And that is that the Lord has come. He has died. He has been crucified. He has been raised from the dead. You have access to salvation. 
and he's coming back. Yeah. It's the he's coming back part that we're missing. Some of us aren't even bringing people to salvation, but we're not even talking to our fellow Christians to say, but are you really ready? Yeah. Have you asked yourself, self, if the Lord came back today, are you ready? Not just in what you're doing, I'm talking about in here. Yeah. Yeah. Is there malice in here? Is there rage? Is there envy? Yeah. Is there covetousness? Is there unforgiveness? Because that will keep you out. Yeah. That will keep you out. Yeah. And so this is a time for the sounding of the alarm. This is to be reminded that a trumpet is sounding. It says in Joel, uh, I believe it's Joel 2 and 15, we are to be a house in Zion that is a trumpet to call a holy fast and to come together as a sacred assembly. Basically, it maps out exactly what we're doing now. That we have decided to be a trumpet in Zion. We have called this holy fast for October. And this fast is serious. Yes. Yes. This fast is, I don't know if any, if some of you have, made, have never fasted before. If you've never fasted before, there's a whole different dimension of life that you're missing out on because you can't even ask, access it unless you fast. And that's just not my opinion, that's the word of God. It says this kind cometh out only by prayer and fasting. That's not just talking about demons. It's talking about strongholds. It's talking about hindering spirits. It's talking about delayed spirits. This kind can only come out by fasting and prayer. We want to do the praying, but we don't want to do the fasting. But what the fasting does is it cleans your temple. Yes. It is the clearing of that ram's horn yes. so that you can be a trumpet in Zion. Yes. You can't just add prayer onto all the junk. Yeah. It's like trying to mask um, a stinky smell just by putting an air freshener up. It doesn't work. The two collide. And so what we're trying to be is, is a ram's horn that is still filled with junk and expect the oil to be able to flow through it. It can't because it hasn't been filtered. Yeah. And so we're calling this holy fast for a reason. Not just so that we can, you know, put you on some dietary restrictions. We want you to clear your horns so that the oil can flow. So not only can you sound, but you can sound with an anointing. Yes. Some of you have been yes. sounding, but it's been tinkling brass and sounding cymbals. Because it hasn't been cleared. Yes. It hasn't been oiled. That's good. That's good. And so we don't want to be sounding and wasting our energy, blowing, uh, you know, our sounds and our noise. And it's not being received unto the Lord. And it's not considered a battle cry because it's not giving off the sound that signifies it's time to go towards victory. Amen? Amen. And so I just wanted to get that word and be obedient to pastor and giving that word that we need to be trumpets and we need to be preparing for the trumpet to sound. So let that add conviction to your heart. Let this make you pray from a different place. Let this refocus you that some of the things I'm frustrated about don't even matter. Because if I was to get caught up today, what would that even matter? If I was to get caught up today, would that even count? Yes. It says that only what we do for God will last. And so even when it comes to some of the things that are good and, and not bad to want, would it last when it comes to God? Because that's what God is coming to judge. So let's be reminded that we need to be trumpets to those around us. And let's keep our trumpets pure. And let us prepare for the Lord's return. Amen. Not just for his presence. For his return. There's a point where it's going to shift from his presence being something that we visit to something that we actually live in. I want to be there. I want to experience it. I want my children to be there. I want my family members to be there. I want my friends. If you really have the spirit of the Lord, you want your enemies to be there. Yes. Yes. Because what will end up happening, your enemy will end up getting saved. Yes. Your enemy will end up getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Your enemy will end up being forgiving. And because you're still holding the resentment, you're the one that's going to get left. Wow. Yeah. Because the Bible says, if you can't forgive them, I can't forgive you. And so how is the Lord giving you access to heaven when he says he can't forgive you? Because you haven't given him the ability because you haven't forgiven the people who, who have offended you. Amen. And so let's just be reminded to be clear vessels, clear trumpets, and to be prepared for that trumpet, that final trumpet of the Lord. So that we can experience heaven, not just how we do in church, but be amongst those yes. that elect that he is going to call up. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on.
almost into your feet with us. We don't want to release a spirit of condemnation. Come out of that. We don't have time for that. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We don't have time for that. But Jesus said, and I've said it, I don't know how many times, that even if the tree bears fruit, that he'll purge it so that it bears more fruit. So the purging is a good thing. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anybody that wants to be cleaned out? Is there anybody that wants every trace of any residue of anything that is not like God? Take it out. Take it out. By any and every means. Whatever way it needs to come out. If I have to cough, let it come out. If, I have to, if it needs, means I'm going to be slobbing all over the floor, as long as when I get up, I'm free. If I need a bucket, I'm going to be free. But as long as when I'm done, I'm free from this thing. But see, the problem is if you still love it. If you still love your bondage. If you still love your prison. If you still love your prisoner. If you still love your jailer. What's, the, what's that um, the thing where you get kidnapped and you fall in love with or you start to bond with your kidnapper? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I can't remember the there is an actual a medically diagnosed uh, phenomenon where someone can kidnap you. Stockholm Syndrome. There it is. Stockholm Syndrome. Where someone can take you captive and you can spend so much time with them that you begin to form an emotional bond with them. And that even if they gave you the opportunity to leave, you won't take it. And so some of us are falling into that category. We spend so much time with our jailer. We spend so much time with our bondage. We spend so much time in our chain that even though Jesus has set us free, we won't walk out. Even though Jesus has opened the prison door, we're still sitting there loving it. And until you hate the sin, until you hate the sin, until you hate the bondage, until you hate the change, until you hate it, you're ineffective to gain freedom from it. You're, and the Bible says that it is only when we resist the devil that he will flee. Amen? Amen. So, Father God, we thank you uh, for this time of year. I thank you for this time of year, God. We thank you for everything that this means. We thank you for the new year. We thank you for the time of crossing over. We thank you for the new season, God, that you're breaking us from obligations and contracts that the enemy has assigned to us, God. We thank you that you've sacrificed your son and we're entering into a season of rest, that we're ceasing from our labor, God, and we're trusting in the finished work of God. And God, we thank you that you sent us the word to prepare ourselves for your home, God. And Father God, you know what? We're not going to be afraid of your coming, God. We won't stand in trepidation. We won't stand in fear and anxiety, God. But we say, your word says, even so come, Lord. Come quickly, Jesus. Come quickly, Jesus. Come quickly, Jesus. Come quickly. De tarry not, God. Delay yourself no longer, God. Even so, God, come. Come, God. It's a beautiful thing you're coming. It's a joyous occasion you're coming. You're coming for your bride. You're coming for your people. You're coming to take us home, God. You're coming to bring us to a place, God, where the weary shall be at rest, God. You're coming to take us from a place where we'll cry no more, God. We say that. We ask that you would come, God. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. Come, Jesus. We ask that you would come, oh, God. Even so, come quickly. He said, Behold, I come quickly. And we say, God, even so, come. Prepare us for your coming, God. Prepare us for your coming, God. Prepare us for your coming, O God. Prepare us, O God. And use us to prepare others, God. Forgive us for being slack in our job, God. But use us to be laborers in the harvest, God. Use us to be laborers in the field, oh God. Use us to be laborers to bring in the harvest of souls, oh God. You said that we should pray to the Lord of the harvest, oh God. That he would send forth laborers into the field. Here we are, God. Send us. 
Here we are, God. Send us. Here we are, God. Send us. Send us, oh God. Send us, oh God. We don't want to just take the salvation and, 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 and enjoy it for ourselves and as long as us four and no more are saved, God. But give us a fire and a passion in our heart for the lost, oh God. Cause us to realize, God, that you said that there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, God, than over 99 of us righteous, God. And so I pray, Father, that you would give us the heartbeat of heaven when it comes to the lost, God. Give us the heartbeat of heaven, oh God. Cause us to be sensitive, God. Cause us to love the things that you love, God. Remind us, oh God, that you love the unsaved, God. That you love the unrighteous, God. That you love the sinner, oh God. And that Jesus didn't die for the right. He died for the sinner, God. He died for the sinner, God. Remind us, God, that while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. And Father, we pray, we ask for forgiveness, God. We repent for our spiritual arrogance. We repent, God, for this pharisaical spirit that we allowed to creep in. This, we repent, God, that we allowed ourselves to get puffed up in our and in, in in something that we received by grace, God. We repent, God, that we've allowed ourselves to look down our nose at people who don't know you like we do, as if we're we've attained something so great and so awesome, God. We ask, Father, that you would forgive us, God, and that you would humble us, so God. Humble us, so God. Humble us, so God. And Father God, I pray in Jesus' name for a spirit of contrition. Give us contrite hearts, oh God. Give us hearts of flesh, Lord. Give us hearts that are easily pricked by your spirit, God. Take out the stony heart, God. And give us a heart of flesh, oh God. Give us hearts that are moldable by you, God. Give us hearts that are malleable, God, that you can mold them into any shape that you desire, God, that you that they're sensitive to the pricking of your spirit, God. I pray, Father, that you would give us your heart. I pray that we would have the heartbeat of heaven, God, in this day and age, God, and that we would prioritize the things that are a priority for you, God, in the name of Jesus. And as we enter into this new year, God, I thank you for every chain that is being broken off of our lives, God. I thank you for everything that you're taking out of us, God. And Father God, we commit to the process, God. We commit to the process, God. We commit to our deliverance, God. We commit to our freedom, God. We commit to our liberty, God. We commit to the process, God. And we pray that you that began this good work, that you would see it through until the day of completion, oh God. We just ask that you would finish it, God. Whatever it takes, God. If we have to roll on the floor, God, we won't be puffed up in our pride and our arrogance, God. We won't be puffed up, God. We won't be embarrassed, God. We don't care what it looks like, God. We just want to be free, God. We just want to be right, God. We just want to be whole, God. We just want to be cleansed, oh, God. We just want to look like you, oh, God. So whatever it takes, oh, God, if you have to embarrass us, embarrass us, oh, God. If you have to break us, God, then we will get even more undignified than this, so oh God. Whatever it takes, oh God. Whatever it takes, oh God. Whatever it takes, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We come to you as children, God. Recognizing that we don't know anything. But you know it all. If you require us to lay hands on the sick, God, then do it, God. If we have to spit in the mud and anoint somebody with the mud, whatever it takes, God, we won't limit your tactics, God. But we pray in the name of Jesus that you would honor our sacrifice, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would honor, God, our attempt. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would honor our heart, God. 
And we thank you, Father, for your Son, for the power of his blood that cleanses us from every fault and stain, God, that purges us from all unrighteousness, God, that purchased our liberty, God. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But you said that because of the blood of Jesus, you have separated us from our sin as far as the east is from the west. So we thank you for the work of Calvary, for the work of your cross. We honor you today, Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, we want to open the altar for anyone that needs prayer. You want to stand in agreement with you or anything. Or anyone that feels called to be an end time trumpet. That feels called to be a loudspeaker for the Lord. For anyone that God is dealing with you about your role in the coming days. We want to stand in agreement with you. If there's anyone in here that's looking for a church home, we know a pretty good one called the Outpour, and we would love to have you here. We will take our job extremely seriously, and we would love to see what God does and works in you. The door to the church is open, and if you want to be filled with the Spirit of the living God, if you recognize that you need power for the days ahead, if you recognize that you need an anointing from the days of head, the Bible says that you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then we ask that you would come to the prayer. So looking for a church home, looking to be filled with the Holy Spirit, need prayer, looking for what to be released into what God has for you in this upcoming year. We ask that you would meet us at this altar. Every time you see them, it brings tears to your eyes. And that is because God has given you 
of his heart for them. And you are called to show them the love of God. You are called to show them the love of God. And I see you being used mightily to bring many. I see you being used mightily to bring many off the street. Bring many into the ark of safety. I see you being used to bring many.
you won't be blocked, God, in the name of Jesus. But I decree breakthrough, God. I decree breakthrough, God. I decree breakthrough, God. I decree breakthrough, oh God. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Make her a battering ram in the spirit, God. Make her a battering ram in the spirit, oh God. In the name of Jesus. That she would run through a tree and leap over the wall of the enemy, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the enemy would be kept against her, God. She will surely break through in Jesus' name. You are called to deliver. You are called to set the captive free. You are called to demolish the yokes of the enemy. You are called. You tried to, you tried to avoid it. You tried to sit down and you questioned it in yourself. And I am telling you by the authority of Jesus Christ, you are called to deliverance ministry. You are called to break chains. You are called to destroy yokes. You are called to release the captive. And you are, not only are you called, but you are mandated to do it. And I am truly requiring it of you. And you shall not withstand me. You shall not resist me. You will surely do what I have sent you to do. You will surely fulfill your purpose. You will surely be obedient to the call. And you won't be satisfied until you walk into it. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare a divine discontent that until you walk into the fullness of this thing, you will not be satisfied. You won't be able to just sit on this gift. I put you in the earth for this purpose, for this time, for this reason, and I will surely require it of you in the name of Jesus. I will surely require it of me in the name of Jesus. You will not stand before me with
opportunity if only you had the platform or the personality. But the Lord says, I have given you this disposition for a reason. I have given you this personality for a reason. I have given you these characteristics for a reason. And he is calling you out and he is drawing you out. And you will say the things that you thought you weren't going to say. And you're going to do the things that in the spirit you know you are called to do. He has surrounded you with people who see things in you. That see things in you, that speak things over you. But God says, I want to draw you out. I see you being drawn out. That your voice is being drawn out. That your calling is being stirred. And it's being drawn out. Whatever hindering spirit to your voice. Whatever spirit has caused you to think that you can't say what you need to say. Make the decisions that you need to make for yourself. The self-care that you feel guilty for having to take. We draw it out right now in the name of Jesus. That silent tears will no longer be your portion. That silent tears will no longer be your portion. I see you in your room crying sometimes. And even though no one's around, you still choose to cry quietly. Silent tears will no longer be your portion. And so, Father God, we come against every heaviness spirit. Every spirit of heaviness. Every burden of depression. Every wandering spirit where she doesn't know where she belongs. Being misunderstood. I come against every anger that will try to resonate in her heart. Every resentment. Every spirit of offense that may be trying to hide and dwell. God, we draw it out even now. And we call her to a greater place of deliverance, a greater place of freedom, and we lose every stronghold, we lose every heaviness, we lose every weight that was trying to so easily beset her, and we break it right now. We break it right now in the name of Jesus, that she is not forgotten, that she is not overlooked, that it's not everybody else but her, but that you see her too. You hear her yes. too. You call her too. Yes. You love her too. You plan to use her too. You plan to reward her too. You yes. too. Yes. You too. Yes. It is for you too. Yes. In Jesus' name.
blogging and vlogging. And I see you kind of tailoring it um, in a way. And you're thinking about the marketing. And you're thinking about how you should set up. I hear formats all over you. And the Lord says, I want you to go off script. And I don't want you to do what's safe. I don't want you to do what's trendy. I don't want you to talk about the hot topics. I want you to talk about the hard things. You've been wondering. And I see you praying, Lord. I've been doing this, but I don't see it where I want it to be. And the Lord said, I want you to come out of the spirit of the norm. I want you to come out of trending. I want you to say what others are not saying. He says, and I will find out. I see people tuning into a page or a channel. Uh, I see vlogging and I see vlogging. Where, where you can express your heart. He says, but take it to another level. Be transparency will be your portion. Transparency will be your portion. Is any of this making sense to you? So God, we send her forth with a new oil and a fresh sound with a fresh wind. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
your personality. But our personality is conformed by the Holy Ghost. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
strategy is not going to be because you came up with a formula. No. You're going to testify about the favor of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, Father God, we seal this right now. That though it may tarry, let her wait for it. Though it tarry, let her, let her wait for it. And then when that time comes, it's going to break. And it's going to break quickly. It's going to break quickly. So, Father, we cover her even now. From every snake, yes. from every user, from every yes. abuser, yes. from every opportunist, that you will be a pitch fence of protection around her, God, and that you will prepare her even the more for what's coming. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father God, I pray, God, that you would help her with the um, foundation. I pray, God, that you would help her with the infrastructure. That's the word I'm hearing for you. I pray, God, that you are surround her with people that will help her build a sturdy infrastructure, God. That her world will be a blessing and not a curse, God, in the name of Jesus. That she will have the, everything in place to support the world. I see everything that Pastor Christie said. I see brick and mortar stores. I see you taking meetings with name brands, so with big stores. They have their what, what, what is your product, if I can ask?
surpasses understanding, God, in the name of Jesus. Your word says that there remains a Sabbath rest for the people. Bring her into rest, God. Bring her rest, God. And if we peace over her, and if we peace over her, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you will cause her mind to stop running, God. That you will give her peace in her mind, God. And peace in her heart, God. mindful of many things, God, but I pray in the name of Jesus that you will clear her mind. Yes. Clear her mind, God, in the name of Jesus. Also to trust that the chastisement of her peace was upon you. And I pray, Father, that you will cease this late laborious spirit, this exhaustion, God, this work to your fingers are about to break. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would free her in the natural and in the spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is a season of rest. Just rest and receive. Rest and receive. Rest and receive. Rest and receive.
is you will have a microphone similar to this, and you will be leading people in worship, and you'll be leading them in prayer, and even at a young age that your mother's cries, your mother's prayers, they're going to start manifesting things that she tells you, things that may seem extra right now, things that may seem like she's going overboard for you, but she's been guarding your anointing, you can preserve, I see you even as a Samuel. go forth early, 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 and God will sustain you for it. He's preparing you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
remembering what he did on the cross. Amen. For his body that was broken on our behalf. And he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, every one of our sicknesses, dis diseases were healed. Let us take together. that seals every covenant, that got us access, that bought us the right to be called children of God and heirs and joint heirs with Jesus for the shedding of his blood that caused the remission of our sins, for the shedding of his blood that is sprinkled on the mercy seat by which we have access to the throne of heaven, by which we can know that we are assured of a glad welcome, by which we can come boldly before his throne of grace. We thank you, Jesus, for the shedding of your blood, that everything is ratified by this blood covenant, God, in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory that's true. And now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before his great white throne, be glory, dominion, power, and majesty, now henceforth and forevermore, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. No red meat, no pork, no sodas, and no candy.